Hey, what's up guys? John here. The White House is getting ready to step in and limit the amount of rent a landlord can charge and potentially even go after them for price gouging. We're starting to see some huge changes coming to the American housing market. So if you're a landlord, you're a property owner, you're an investor, you're even a tenant, you're somebody that wants to potentially own property, this is something that you have to pay close attention to. The last couple of years, a lot of people were investing heavily into real estate mainly because you know money was cheap. You could borrow 30 year fixed rate debt at 3%. You could borrow money at levels in which you, know, you couldn't obtain ever in the course of history. Just cheap, cheap money. And everyone was afraid of inflation. So why not borrow money at a low interest rate and invest it in something that's likely going to appreciate historically, which is multifamily real estate. However, we're starting to see something that is shocking. I've been talking about this for a while on this channel saying that we are stepping into a new economy. We're stepping into one in which the societal contract is being changed between business owners and customers, between landlords and tenants, between governments and people. We're starting to see everything change. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly what's going on and what you should be doing about it. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. YouTube's going to share this video to educate more people about what they should be doing in terms of investing in real estate and business. If you know how fixing your credit, maybe you want to uh, get debt free. Maybe you want to get out of high interest credit card debt so that you can invest in real estate or you can uh, invest in your business. Greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. We help people fix their credit. You can give us a call at 561-430-5900. Take a look at this. So this is Vice. Universal, right, universal rent control is the left wing's dream that's actually happening. And this came out March 6th of 2019. So they say it's actually happening. But this article came up from the White House and from Politico through the White House. 118, right? So this just came out. Uh, Politico, White House prepares new tenant protections alarming the housing industry. Democrats want the administration to enact new restrictions on rent hikes and punish landlords. Punish landlords that they accuse of price gouging. Now imagine this. Imagine you had that authority. For example, I know you wouldn't do this, but let's say, say for example, you had the authority, let's say you were selling cups, right? And you were able to go out there and point at all of your competitors that are also selling cups and say, you know what? You're selling these cups for too much money. You're price gouging the general public. You need to reduce your prices. And the cup manufacturer says, hey, you know, I can only afford to sell it at the price in which I'm selling it for now. If I were to reduce my prices 5% or 10%, I would go out of business. And then you say, well, you have to because it's unfair. And so ultimately what happens is you'd be able to accumulate all these different cup companies and you would then have a monopoly, right? Very simple. But we ask ourselves, they say one of the big problems that we have in America is affordable housing, that we need affordable housing and that the government needs to step in to make things more fair and just and to combat inequality, right? So when we look at all these different things, we, we can connect the dots pretty easily. So the White House is preparing to roll out new measures as soon as this month to protect tenants in the wake of a post-pandemic price spikes, according to housing advocates and industry lobbyists who have met with administration officials. Now, am I saying real estate is a bad investment? Definitely not, I love real estate investing, but what I am saying is that we should all be very cautious about what's actually happening behind the scenes so that we can prepare financially for the curveballs that are going to be coming to the housing market. The actions, which will come even as rents have started to fall around the country, could include promoting grace periods for late rents. Interesting. They would be able to issue a grace period for late rents, but yet mortgages would be due on the first. Property tax would be due on time. No grace periods there. And the right to counsel for tenants facing eviction. Now, if you don't know what rent control is, rent control is a set of rules and laws in which landlords must operate under. So it goes from a landlord being the full property owner to essentially the landlord becoming more of a property manager for the state. And so when they're moving forward on this situation, which is a right to counsel for tenants facing eviction, these tenants would ultimately have access to free legal representation. So in Los Angeles, they have all these different tenant, tenant networks. Uh, New York, many places have these free tenant advocacy networks where they represent tenants for free. So this incentivizes tenants to pursue legal action because landlords, they have to pay between three and $500 per hour for legal representation. So for a tenant and a landlord to go to court in let's say Los Angeles, it would not cost the tenant any money 
uh, they would simply get that free representation. Especially if they're making less than you know a certain amount of money, they would just get the free representation. Otherwise, they might have to pay like a fifty dollars court filing fee. But the cost is like basically zero for the tenant. The landlord might have to pay fifteen to twenty thousand or twenty five thousand dollars in legal costs to get in front of a judge. Like it's extremely, extremely expensive. And so when you're issuing or they're promoting grace periods and the right to free um, legal representation, among others you'll start to see the problems that are stepping forward for landlords. The housing advocacy industry already facing a declining market. And I've actually uh, talked about this for a year, saying that rents are going to start to decline. And that's starting to happen now. Uh, California rents fall for the fourth straight month. Uh, just wait. Just wait, especially as all these developers start to try to unload their communities over 2023 and interest rates went from 3% to 7%. You're going to start to see uh, even KB Homes was talking about 68% of all of their contracts canceled for new home buyers. Uh, you're going to start to see them start to commit these properties to private equity firms and these firms are going to start listing them for rent. A lot more inventory is going to be coming out. A uh, preemptive counter push arguing that the state and local regulations on leasing are sufficient and federal intervention in the market could curtail desperately needed affordable housing investments. So you think about this. They start to come forward with all these new rules, all these different guidelines, and their goal is stated right here is affordable housing. So they want that inventory. The industry is bracing for some pretty intense regulations, says Jerry Howard, CEO of National Association of Home Builders, whose members include landlords. They need to be very cautious about what they're doing, said Howard, who was one of a handful of industry represent representatives at a November White House meeting on tenant protections. There's a real chance of it creating a problem that doesn't exist. With a possible recession looming, the Biden administration will be looking for ways to provide relief to cash-strapped Americans suffering from higher cost of living. Now, higher cost of living, can we say that this is just landlords? No. You can go to the grocery store. I feel it. Everything is getting much more expensive. I'm spending 20, 30% more than I was spending last year, the year before. Everything is getting more expensive. I go to the gas pump. I filled up uh, yesterday. And the cost to fill up yesterday was much, much more expensive than what it was two weeks ago. Like it, it, everything is just continuing to rise. Eggs, car insurance, health insurance, everything is going up. So to say that it's just landlords is probably unlikely, especially when you look at the cost of insurance. Insurance is going through the roof. Property taxes are going up. Repairs on properties are going up. I mean, where are all these costs going to go? They're going to be pushed along to the tenant, just like all the costs for the farmers and all the costs for everything else is being pushed along to the consumer when they go to the grocery store, right? Everything just gets pushed to the next guy to pay. Since the U.S. housing house is now under Republican control, the kind of sweeping economic legislation enacted during the last two years is off the table. Democratic lawmakers, including Sen Senator Elizabeth Warren, are leaning on the administration to go big by curbing rent increases at millions of units in properties with government-backed mortgages. Think about that. Now, if you bought properties over, let's say, the last two years, you're most likely probably buying somewhere between a 3 to 3.75 cap or a four to four and a half cap, depending on your area. Maybe some people say, oh no, I'm getting a five cap or a six cap. Well, treasuries, two year treasuries right now are four and a quarter percent, right? So you're starting to see a lot more uh, attention going to treasuries than you're gonna be in real estate. Now, especially when you start to see what's happened right now, they wanna curb rent increases to say how much you can or can't increase the you know, your rent inside of your building, if you're the landlord, hypothetically, meaning that your costs are only going to continue to rise. The borrowing costs, mortgage rates are continuing to rise, but they're going to tell you that you can't push these costs onto the tenant. So what's ultimately going to happen? You're going to start seeing landlords say, you know what? It makes more sense to buy treasuries. It makes more sense to get out of the industry. And this is ultimately going to be a, a big uh, something we all have to pay very close attention to. This is going to be a big milestone for property owners. A long shot move the White House is not seriously weighing, according to a person with knowledge of the discussion. People can't afford to live. Well, again, this is not just landlords. Uh, a bad policy decisions the last few years. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Who spearheaded a letter last week with Warren calling, calling on President Joe Biden to issue an executive action limiting rent hikes on properties backed by the De Department of Housing and Urban Development by Fannie and Freddie, the government-controlled mortgage financiers who want to push the president as far as possible to lighten the burden of rent on everyday people. Democrats want the administration to enact new restrictions on rent hikes and punish landlords they accuse of price gouging. Not just principles, not just guidelines, but what we can 
do through executive action to tighten the burden on people and put more money in their pockets. The White House declined to comment on the specifics of potential new regulations pointing to a statement it released last week in response to a letter from Democrats. We are exploring a broad set of administrative actions that further our commitment to ensuring fair and affordable housing market for renters across the nation. We look forward to continuing to work with lawmakers to strengthen tenant protections and improve rental affordability. While rent is still driving up overall inflation, and they came out with this uh, uh, data saying that one big component of consumer price index, housing stayed stubbornly high in December. The shelter index rose 0.8% for the month before, it was up 7.5% year over year, even though there's been a big slowdown in the housing market with both rents and home prices falling in recent months. So their inflation is now the fault of the uh, property owner. While rent is still an overall inflation, thanks in part to the data lag, the official inflation gauge, the national median rent has fallen for the four straight months, according to the latest data from the apartment list. New lease demand plummeted in the second half of 2022, when the net demand for apartments fell into negative territory for the first time since 2009. Complication, complicating this process isn't good at any time in a market cycle, said Greg Brown, Senior VP of Government Affairs at the National Apartment Association. But we're in the fourth straight month of rent declines. I think things are just adjusting again. So it does raise the question, are they responding to a situation of three or four months ago, not what is currently happening, or will it happen in the near future? The association and ton other industry groups urge Biden to resist pressure to lay new federal requirements on top of existing regulations and say that doing so would further exasperate affordable challenges. Even as demand eases, the market is about to see a surge in supply. As I mentioned before, a lot of rental supply is going to be coming. Completing in 2023, we're going to see more completions we have in 40 plus years. I mean, this is absolutely, this is going to start to get out of control. If we start to move in this direction where there's so many things happening in the economy, look at what's happening with the job market. We're starting to see so many employers lay off their employees by the thousands. So what are these employees that thought that they had this cush job the last couple of years that bought a house going to do? They're going to try to find other work. And if they can't find other work, they're either going to try to sell their property, but they bought their property at a 3% interest rate. They might not want to sell it. What are they going to try to do? They're going to try to rent it out. Or, you know, if the market fell, like, you know, like look at Austin, look at San Francisco, uh, look at a lot of these tech markets, they might have the equity in their properties to sell it. So they're going to list it for rent. So you're going to have these people listing for rent. And over 200,000 tech employees lost their jobs over the last 12 months. So this is really heating up quickly. Uh, you have retirees that thought that they had their retirement tucked away, but now inflation's getting out of control. They realize that if they sell their property, they might not be able to you know, have enough proceeds to make it to the end. What are they gonna do? They're gonna rent out their properties. What about the people that are already in financial hardship, which is many? What are they gonna do? If they can't sell the property, they're gonna rent it out. You have the home builders, as I mentioned before, they're gonna start renting out their properties. You're gonna have people that have second homes, which is a lot of people. In Florida, for example, you know, you have about 17% of all homes in Florida that are vacant. You're gonna have all this inventory start to hit the market alongside massive new regulations that are gonna push a lot of investors out of the market. Uh, you know, we have some big changes coming to housing. Someone asked me before, hey, John, are you investing in 2022? And the answer was, no, I'm more of a seller. I'm selling in 2022. I'm not so much of a, a buyer. Um, so that, that was my belief. I think that there's going to be a lot of great investing opportunities coming very, very soon. But I think it's smart to wait and see how this plays out. See what the rules of the game are going to really look like so you can use these new guidelines to make smart and financially well-informed decisions and not buy and invest based on hype and mania like we've seen over the last couple of years, people diving into Airbnb and diving into all these different trends trying to catch the next uh, wave. If you just wait, I think you're gonna get some really, really good opportunities as we start to see fear really run rampant in this market. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop it below, hit the like button, subscribe, and subscribe on my second channel. It's an interactive call-in show uh, and a podcast. I have more guests coming in the next week and a half, so be sure to subscribe over there. Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok up in the banner. And again, if you need help fixing your credit, we would love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. You can give us a call at 561 430 5900. That's 561 430 5900.